Dude, have you heard of this game called Token? Uh, like the rapper? Hello, nerds. On this episode, we're going to talk about the game Token, which I actually found scrolling through social media, and I came across Cassie Mothwin's page, and she was talking about it. First of all, it's a two-player GM-less game, which, as Seth is our resident game master here, I thought that was a great opportunity for him to become a player. So the basic structure of this game, essentially, is you have a dweller who lives in a forest, and then you have a seeker that is driven to seek out said dweller and you go through a couple of different turns everybody has some stuff we'll get into those details in a minute but you are essentially driven together once you connect a secret is given and then you can kind of play out the end of the game it's really cool, very collaborative, very open dialogue, and it gives you an opportunity to do a little bit of role play and a little bit of just conversation between you know two people. And that's something that I think is really unique in the space of the TTRPG community. And especially in times when it's hard to get a group of folks together, you know, five or more, this is that perfect opportunity. If only two people show up to your D&D session, have this book in your backpack, pull it out, and then you can still play and have a good time. So let's get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes of this. Seth, do you want to take us through character creation? Yeah, so for a more detailed example of this, we will be posting a playthrough on Saturday where you can see how we created characters, but to give you kind of a general gist, you're going to be rolling a series of six-sided die. We'll throw up a visual of the character sheet, but basically you're going to roll first and foremost for your past, and that's going to give you a little bit of flavor text and also give you an accompanying skill. Then you'll You'll move on to your identities. You'll roll on that table three different times. So you'll get three different flavor text for your background, if you will, with corresponding skill sets, which you will use kind of as you're narrating through the story that you're creating with your other player, partner, friend enemy. You know, you can do this with anyone. And then you'll move into instinct, which you'll roll on that table as well. And that's essentially the same for the seeker and the dweller. Lastly, you're going to roll for a secret, which you're literally going to keep a secret from the other person you're playing with, because you will hopefully, if you win, reveal that at the end. Exactly. And essentially how you win is you're going to gain three tokens. So your whole goal in this is to receive tokens and stay away from receiving scars. If you get three tokens, you win. If you get three scars, you lose. Now, this is a two-player game, but there is a third player, and that's the forest. The forest is always out to get you, so there is a possibility that the two of you could lose collectively because the forest has taken over. So there's a few different things that you can do to combat the forest. When it comes to the rules, here's a very brief overview. I highly recommend checking out our Saturday playthrough for a little bit more of the meat and potatoes on it. But basically what you're doing for each turn, you can either do a reflection roll or a challenge roll. Your reflection roll is made up of a possibility of two light dice and one dark die. And essentially what you're looking for is the highest number. If you get a one through a three, the forest gains a token and something bad happens to you. If you get a four through five, then you gain a token and then something also bad happens to you and the forest gains a token. And if you get a six, which is the optimum roll, you gain a token, nothing bad happens, the world keeps spinning. Then once the forest gains a token, if you wanna take that away, you can challenge it with a challenge roll, which could be made up of one light die and two dark die. Now, on a challenge roll, you want the best outcome possible, but there is risk for every die that you throw out there. If you get a six on a dark die, that's an immediate scar. And yeah, you may have been successful in removing a token, but you took some damage along the way. Throughout that, you can also roll on different tables for flavor text or for questions that you can ask the other player to kind of learn a little bit more about that player's backstory. And a lot of this, there's no preparation involved in this. It's very on the go. It's very spur of the moment. And you are essentially two people telling a story about two characters that are being drawn together. And you can do that through your character sheet, through your features, and it's a fun kind of thought-provoking experience. So Seth, we've already played through this. So give us your thoughts on this game as our resident game master. So I think the tone of the game is really cool. It's very dark, it's set in a forest. We did a video earlier last year on the Dolmenwood Kickstarter, which was huge. It reminds me of that, like this dark fairy tale forest. and 
And I love that tone. I think just getting in that mindset and reading through the text and immersing yourself in that dark world is worth the price of admission of this book. That being said, I think the layout is awesome. It's got something that I always look for in an RPG book, and that is just a spread of the rule procedure. It's very clear. It's right there. So if I wanted to flip straight to that, I could get a pretty good idea of how to play the game at just a, a glance. And so I appreciate that. In addition, I think it is cool to have the option to Drew's point as like the forever DM to be a bit of a player and to have that kind of scapegoat if you do want to play a game and you just can't get your group together that week or whatever. This is an awesome option. And then lastly, I'm going to say that I do appreciate the quality of the book. It's got kind of a nice uh, sort of slick matte cover to it, which I think is really nice. And then it's got, uh, and I've seen this in other paperbacks, it's kind of got like a perforated spine, which sort of just makes it open nicely. I, I don't know. It's just, it's a nice little touch that I don't think they had to do, but it just makes it feel a little bit more premium. I agree. And I also like the support. So if you're new to gaming and you feel apprehensive about playing in a bigger D&D game or a cyborg game or Morkborg or whatever, this is a great support system. There's a lot of random tables that you can roll on for your character, for the location that you're in, for you know things that you could be doing, for threats that are coming to get you. There's a great safety net in this game so that if you are completely confused as to what to do, the dice can always help you out. And I like that this is based on a D6 system. I feel like most people have a D6 in their house somewhere. You will need more than just one, but it's really cool. It's very approachable. It is a darker set but even in the back, they do have rules for lightening this up a little bit so that you can play with kids. They also have a couple of examples on ways to play so you can really have that crutch of just playing through a story that they've pretty much already written for you. So I highly recommend this game. I immediately fell in love with this. So again, Cassie, thank you so much for making that TikTok because this is something that I will be playing a lot in the future. And with that, don't forget to check out our Saturday playthrough where you can see Drew and I like really get into this game, kind of just hang out and, and enjoy playing games together. And maybe we fall in love. Who knows? You'll have to watch to the end to see if that's the case. And with all that being said, thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. And from all of us here at Nerd Leading the Nerd, come back soon. Because we'll be waiting. I believe um, that a hit record is like a stew. Pittsburgh with a Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh with a Pittsburgh. All the ingredients have to go in just right, or otherwise it's just soup. Never too early in the day for one of these. I'm thirsty. <laughs>